He is risen. He is risen indeed. All right, great response. This morning we are going to do something a little different. As the children are heading back to Children's Church, this group behind me and I have put together a combination of an Easter message and music. And we have entitled it, He Promised. Have you ever made a promise that you didn't keep? I see most people shaking their head and a few people that are lying. Uh, <laughs> how about these? I'll be there to pick you up at 4 o'clock. How about this? I'll call you right back. Or how about I'll have it done by Monday. All right? All of those are ones that have caught me and uh, I'm sure have caught you as well. well. We're going to look at this message entitled, He Promised. And what we're going to do is to look at a promise that he has made in the Old Testament or in the New, some promise that God has made, and then we're going to see the answer to it that he has given to us in five different categories. First, I want to say, this book of his is the greatest love story between God and man that could ever be written. It contains promise after promise. In fact, they say that there's 7,000, somebody recorded, there's 7,487 promises of God in this book. And God is a promise keeper. There is not one promise that he has made that will not be true or will be made true in the future. This book is the most popular book that was ever written. Last year alone, 20 million copies in the United States were sold. They say that over 5 billion copies of the scripture has been printed and sold worldwide. Five billion copies of God's great story of mankind from beginning of time, not his time, our time, to the end of time. And so here we are with one who is going to keep his promises, and he has given us one that we have come to celebrate today. His name is Jesus Christ. And here is a scripture for you, 2 Corinthians 1.20 says, For all of God's promises have been fulfilled in Christ with a resounding yes. All of his promises can be fulfilled, fulfilled in Christ, and it is yes in Christ. So as we look at these promises today, we will see this Jesus as one who is central to all of time. Next slide, if you would. We will see that this Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He is the first and the last. Everything revolves around him. And in between that Alpha and the Omega stands a cross in which our God left heaven and came to save us. First promise is this. He promised to save us. Why a Savior? You have to go all the way back to the beginning. When God made the heavens and the earth, he formed them in six days, and everything, the scripture says, was good. And he made man, and man was good. And he put him in a garden, and he told him, you are free to eat of all the trees in the garden, but there is one tree you must not eat of, and that is the tree, the knowledge of good and evil. For if you do, the moment you do, you will die. And we know the story. The serpent, Satan, came in the form, spoke to Eve, convinced her that the fruit of that tree was better than the other fruit, and that by eating that fruit, they would become like God. And she gave some to Adam, and he ate. 
The scripture says, as God was walking in the cool of the day in the garden, he was looking for Adam and looking for Eve, only to find out that they had eaten of the tree. The moment you eat, you will die. They did not die physically that day, but they did die from a separation from that wonderful relationship we had with God in a perfect place called Eden. And you remember the story, don't you? They banned, they were banned from Eden. God put angels at the head of the east side there so they could not get back in. And in his judgment upon Adam and upon Eve, and especially on the serpent, he wrote this in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. Speaking to the serpent, he said, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers and he will crush your head and I or you will strike his heel. We know that the crushing of Satan, the victory was won at the cross, but it was done by a savior. Look at this next verse, Luke chapter two, the angel said to the shepherds, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the city of David, a savior has been born to you, who is Christ the Lord. So as we see one promise and we see it fulfilled as we do here in Luke 2, here he is, a savior has been born we also have a song that's going to be able to share with that. So if you would, you would listen to the choir as they sing, God So Loved.
trust in Him will live forever. The power of hell forever defeated. Now it is well. I'm walking in freedom for God so loved. God so loved the world. Bring all your failures. Bring your addictions. Come lay them down at the foot of the cross. Jesus is waiting. God so loved the world. He promised a savior for us, but he promised Emmanuel to us. Who would have thought that the savior would be God himself? That God would leave the throne room of heaven and come down to be with us. But that's exactly what scripture prophesied would happen. Isaiah chapter 7, 14, therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. This one was born of a virgin. The seed, the offspring was of the woman, not of the man, so that he might be forever without sin. And he was going to be called Emmanuel, God with us. And then fulfillment of this verse is John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. What a remarkable, wonderful God we serve, who loved us enough not to leave us in our sinful condition, but to come and to save us. Listen now as we sing Emmanuel. Will you please stand? David says in Psalm 139, O oh Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. 
Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, O Lord. You hem me in behind and before. You have laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you're there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there, your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. For the night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days of ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, O oh God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. Emmanuel, God with us.
He promised us a Savior. He promised to be with us. But he also promised a substitution for us. That boggles my mind. A Savior is coming. God is going to be with us. But he instead is going to be our substitute for the penalty of our sin that we should have borne. Scripture says, the soul that sins shall die. And the wages of sin is death. Our just punishment for our sin was both a physical death and a spiritual death. Physical that we would die, spiritual we would be separated from God for all eternity. But he promised. In Isaiah 53, verses 5 and 6, But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way. And the Lord laid upon him the iniquity of us all. That was the promise of Isaiah some 800 years before Christ would appear on the scene. Before he would die on a cross for the sins of the world. And Romans 5, 8 says this. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners... Christ died for us. Very rarely, Paul says, would anybody die for a righteous person, someone who loves God? Too much difference between them and the world. Though for a good person, someone that is good by world standards, or somebody possibly would die for them. But we were neither righteous nor good. We were sinners. And Christ came to save us. While still in our sin, he did not come and say to us, you get your life in order and then I'll save you. He said, no, while you're still in disorder because of the sin in your life, I have come to be your substitute. Amazing. Amazing. We have a couple of songs for you to hear. The first one is called The Gospel Song by Ope.
His life for mine, his life for mine. How could it ever be that he would die? God's son would die to save. that Emmanuel would be a substitute for our sins but he also promised a resurrection to show us what nerve could a man say you kill me and I'll come back to life in three days C.S. Lewis said someone like that would either be a liar or a lunatic or Lord. I choose to think he was Lord. That he would die, that he would be buried, 
that he would be entombed for three days. And on this anniversary of his death, he would rise from the dead and be seen by no less than a dozen people on that same day. And the scripture tells us in, in uh, 1 Corinthians 15 that he was saw by more than 500 believers at one time. Do you know during the 40 days that he made an appearance here upon the earth, giving convincing proof that he was who he said he was? He never appeared to anyone who was not a believer. You see, if it had been me, I would have made a beeline to Herod, I'd have made a beeline to Caiaphas, and I'd have made a beeline to Pilate. And I would have said, Ta da! <laughs> I'm back. Just as I said. But he had promised. In Isaiah 53, verse 11. After he had suffered, he will see the light of life and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant will justify many, and he will bear their iniquities. That was the promise. Here's the fulfillment by the promise keeper. Matthew chapter 28, verses 5 to 7. And the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who is crucified. He is not here. He is risen just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead. And that is the message of today and every day for Christians alike. Will you stand with us as we sing, He Lives and One Day. I serve a risen Savior, He's in the world today.
Savior. He promised Emmanuel that God would be with us. He promised a substitution of him in our place. He promised a resurrection to show us, and he promised a return for us. A promise. Matthew 28 verse 30 and 31. Then will appear in the, uh, the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then all the peoples of the earth will mourn when they see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven and with great power and great glory. And he will send his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four winds, from the four in, uh, from one end of the heavens to the other. One day, that is going to happen. Of the five promises God has made, that is the only one that hasn't been fulfilled. But He is coming with great power and great glory. And he will gather, his angels will gather his elect, those who place their trust in him, they will gather them from the four corners of the earth to be with him. We will see him. And we will sing glory to his name. This group back here has been practicing for that day this week. And they want to share with you at this moment, glory, 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 in anticipation of the time they will sing it before a holy God.
the morning our song shall rise to and mighty God in three persons blessed Trinity for you. Are you ready for Christ's return? The Christ who is Savior. The Christ who was Emmanuel. The Christ who would die in our place. The Christ who would rise again and the Christ who is coming again. 
Are you ready to meet him? I'm not asking about something that has happened in the past. I'm wanting to know where your trust is for today that you are going to meet him and be right with him when you do. Christ died and he rose again to offer forgiveness of sin and salvation from death for everyone who believes. It is not a one-time thing that maybe happened at a child's camp. It is what are you believing today? And that belief that you have today is what's going to carry you if the Lord were to come back today. It's a wonderful day to be able to offer an invitation on a risen Lord's behalf. And to invite people today to see a risen Lord just as they saw him on Easter Sunday morning. So would you bow your heads with me? I don't know where you stand with the Lord right now. I don't know what is in your heart. But I do know one who does. He knows you through and through. He knows before you sit down and when you stand up. He knows a word that comes out of your mouth before it leaves your lips. He knows everything that you have done. And he loves you. He has you here today just to be able to tell you once again, I love you. And there is no sin that you have ever committed that he is not willing to forgive. And today could be the day that you receive him as Savior and Lord. The scripture says at the moment that happens that the old is gone and behold, all things become new. We're not new at the moment in every way, but we have then been cleansed of all our sin and we are becoming new each and every day. We're turning from our sin and turning from our own self and the ways that we would go and we are turning to this one who died for us, who conquered death and sin for our greatest need. And today is receiving people all over the world who will come to him. If you're here today, and that would be a desire of your heart, today I want to follow Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. You could call upon him right where you're at. I'm not going to ask you to come forward. I'm just going to ask you right where you're at to do business with God. Cindy and Chrissy said, there's not a place that you can go. He's not there. And he is here today. And he is stretch out his arms to receive you. So if your heart is to receive Jesus today as Savior and Lord, you could pray a prayer like this. Dear Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner and I'm far from you. But you came to me you came as a savior. You came as holy God. And you came to substitute yourself in my place. And you bore the punishment for my sins and you took the death that I deserved. And you arose from the dead so that I could believe that you are indeed the son of God who has come to save the world. So right now, Lord, will you save me? I put my trust and belief in you. I believe that you are a savior who has come. And right now, in this moment, I surrender my life 
and myself to you. Help me to live the life that you would want me to live. Come and live in me and give me your Holy Spirit to lead me and guide me in the way that I would go as a deposit for one day what you will give me in heaven. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you'd look this way, if you prayed that prayer, the scripture says that we are not to be ashamed of our Lord. And that everyone that Jesus called in in a time in which he was here, acknowledged him in a very public way. And so today, after this final song that we're going to sing, if you would just come and let me know, I received Christ today as my Lord. Or I repented and am returning to Christ as Lord. I would love to be able to share that with you and to rejoice with you. And I'll be right over here after this last song. The last promise is he promised to return. Revelation chapter 22 says this, look, these are Jesus's words. Look, I'm coming soon. My reward is with me and I will give to each person according to what he has done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. And at the end of the book, one of his last words were, I'm coming soon. As a constant, a constant reminder, I could be there at any moment. And when he is, it is going to be a glorious time. There's a final song by the, uh, the choir. Haven't they done a great job? I hope you'll say something to them as they're done. Listen. Risen. He is risen indeed. Those are the remarks that Christians have exchanged on Easter for centuries. But you know, every Sunday is really an Easter because every Sunday we celebrate a risen Christ. And really, that risen Christ affects us every day of our lives. And you know what? He has given us his spirit that affects us every moment of every day of our lives. The scripture says that that is a deposit of what is to come. I sold real estate for about 17 years, and when you wrote a contract, you took down an earnest money deposit. God has given us a deposit of what is to come. It's not a reality. We do not have that home in heaven. We have not met our Savior face to face. We have not been in the presence of all the church of all time. But it is coming. And as we gather today, it is a foretaste of what will happen in the days ahead. When we will sing praises to our Lord and we will be in the presence of his people forever and ever and ever. If there is a thing on your heart, something on your heart that you would like to talk about, I hope that you'll give me a call this week. and We can discuss it. I'd love nothing better than to be able to, uh, to speak with you. My number is 330-465-2356. Until next week, may God richly bless 